Welcome to a short presentation from our Diagnostics over IP series. In the next five minutes, we will have a look at the absolute basics you need to know. A typical do IP communication sequence. So in the beginning, of course, you need to connect your ECU first. So for this, we have the Vector Network Hardware Interface 5610A. Um, but today, we will have just a look at the typical communication sequence in theory. At first, after the connection, you need to make sure that the IP address assignment is done correctly. So how to configure this in Canoo in the TCP IP stacks configuration is covered by a different video on this channel. So after the IP address assignment, if the ECU is powered up, it will send three times a vehicle announcement message. Depending on the network status, this will be forwarded to the tester. And depending if the tester received this vehicle announcement or not, it will send a vehicle identification request and uh, the DoIP ECU will answer this if it received this request. This whole communication sequence is performed using the UDP protocol. The vehicle identification request can be sent with or without parameters. If sent without parameters, like in this example here, this is like asking the network who is there. So all ECUs or all vehicles in the network which will receive this request here will respond with their vehicle identification number. And this will be sent via a vehicle identification response message. To send a vehicle identification request without parameters, just leave the address field empty. Additionally, it is necessary to select the correct adapter so that the IP address for the tester is used correctly. The vehicle identification request can also be sent with parameters. So if it's sent with a vehicle identification number or with an entity ID, like indicated here, um, you can configure this here in the address field of the diagnostics ISOTP configuration. In this case, only one ECU will answer the ECU which has the correct win or the correct entity ID. All other ECUs will just discard the message. For the further steps, it is necessary to use the TCP transport protocol. This means the tester needs to open the TCP channel in a so-called TCP handshake. If this is done, the next step is the routing activation. The routing activation request is sent by the tester to the ECU, and the ECU responds if the routing was successful. So the routing activation is necessary to activate the communication with ECUs behind the gateway, for example, or the gateway itself. And to ensure that this is correctly working, it's necessary to set the logical address of both of the tester and the ECU. If this is done, we can start doing diagnostics via DoIP diagnostic messages. So the tester will start with a diagnostic message and immediately the gateway has to respond with the so-called diagnostic message positive acknowledgement. This means the gateway has received the message correctly and now it tries to forward it to a car internal network or it processes this internally. If this is done, means if the ECU in the car internal network was responding, the gateway will transfer this message on DoIP via a DoIP diagnostic message. And the response then is visible, for example, in the diagnostics console of GNU. Finally, if all diagnostic messages have been sent, this can be repeated multiple times, the TCP channel will be closed with the so-called TCP teardown. Okay, that were the absolute diagnostics of IP basics in about five minutes. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, check out our other diagnostics of IP videos on vector.com or on our YouTube channel.